Today, our scripture reading is from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 17 to 22, and chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. And he, Jesus, came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. For this reason I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of man in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given me by the working of his power. To me... Though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things, so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today many people have different ideas about church. We can say that some people want to have a charismatic and strong leader and they will follow that leader. But this is how sects and cults function and operate. Other people who live in democratic societies, they say, well, several people should agree on starting a church and then we can come together, we can put together our constitution and then we will raise money, we will build our building, we will plan our programs and ideas, activities, what we want to do. And then if we want to decide on something, we will vote. And if we decide on something by vote, if majority decides, then we will go with that. So this is how we see church. Well, people see church as an organization, a business, or maybe a shop or store that sells spiritual products and services. You see, the problem with all these ideas about church is that they are completely different from what we can see in the Bible, in the Word of God. Now, when we read this letter to Ephesians, we can hear the voice of Apostle Paul, but if we listen even more carefully, we can hear the voice of Jesus himself. And the first thing that draws our attention is this word mystery. Several times Apostle Paul says, the mystery was made known to me by revelation. The mystery of Christ. And then he says, what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God? When you think about mystery, 
that was hidden in God, this plan of mystery which was hidden in God, that just tells you about the scale of this thing. Well, you can imagine that God's plan to build His church was hidden from everyone, including angels and archangels. It was hidden in God. God was thinking about this plan. And then He came up with this plan to build His church. But you need to understand that God's plan is different from our plan. When we say church, we think locally. We think about our local church and we think about our local members. But when God thinks about church, He thinks about all Christians who live and who will live in the future. You see, when we build our churches, we use constitution, we use, you know, brick, and we use wood, and we build our buildings, and we put together our constitution. But when God builds, He builds using people. He builds using people. We are his little building blocks. But now, just like you, when you have your little project, if you cook something, or if you build something, or if you try to make something, you need ingredients, you need supplies, you need materials, and you also need tools and instruments. So, if your materials are good and your instruments are good, you use them and you are successful, you are productive. But if your tools and instruments are not good or if your materials are not good, then you cannot use them, you just throw them away. And this is what we can see that in this amazing, magnificent building project, when God is using us to build this huge spiritual temple in which He wants to abide, if He finds us not good material, not good tool, He would just cast us out. And we can see that in the book of Revelation, when he talks in chapter 2 and chapter 3, he talks to his churches. And he says, well, he praises some of them. He says, you are faithful. You keep my word. You do what I told you to do. But then he will tell the other churches, but you are not doing what you are supposed to do. You have your idols and you don't keep my word. And you think that you are rich financially, but you are poor, you are blind. Buy this gold from me, spiritual gold. And if you don't do that, I will come and punish you. And he says, repent, repent and change. So you see, God wants good material to build his church. Now, it doesn't mean that we should should earn our salvation or justification. No, no, we are not talking about this. We know that by the blood of Jesus, by God's grace, through our faith, we are justified, and it's a gift. But then we also know that we are God's workmanship, which means that God created us so that we can do good works, which He wants us to do. So, which means, yeah, it's not just, I believe in Jesus, I'm saved, that's it. No, I'm supposed to show new obedience and follow what Jesus tells me to do. So, now when Jesus is building his church, he's not looking at all the buildings and memberships and all human organizational kind of principles and boundaries and, you know, ideas. He looks at people's hearts and he can use people from different churches and he builds his universal church. And we read about this. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. 
You see, now what Paul says, well, you see, you have a foundation, and that foundation is Jesus himself and his apostles. So listen to Jesus. Find out what Jesus' design is. Because if you try to build something that is not according to God's will, you are on your own. You build your own church, your own religious organization, which will fall apart. God is not building that. So participate in God's building project. So now Jesus. And then it's all about Jesus, verse 21, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. You see what is interesting here? That it's not only that, that to have a solid foundation we need Jesus and apostles and prophets, and we need to be in Jesus because only in him this temple can be holy because of his blood and his forgiveness and his righteousness which he gives to us. But we also see that we are not active in this process. We are passive. You know, we have this idea that we are doing something for God and we will start a program or do something. You know, we build this church for God. You know, we did it. But in reality, God is building his church, his spiritual church. And all he cares about is his spiritual temple because he will abide in this eternal spiritual temple. But our role is passive. We are being joined together. We are being built together. And who does this building and joining? And it's the Holy Spirit. And if you go to the small catechism written by Martin Luther, this section, the creed, sanctification, you will see that the Holy Spirit gathers us, enlightens us, brings us to faith, and he builds church. It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. We need to be good tools, instruments, and ingredients so that he may use us and build his church. Now, all of a sudden, you can imagine that our understanding of church is so limited, is so distorted. We need to understand that this is God's plan. And you can see churches that are closing down. And you may say, well, what is happening? But you need to know that there are so many churches that just begin flourishing and growing. And if you analyze all those churches that are growing and flourishing, you will see that they want to align their will with the will of God. And they want to say, God, you give us the blueprint, it's the word of God, we are following that. And all the churches that come up with their own ideas, that the church is, you know, just to satisfy their spiritual needs, or, you know, something about them, not about Jesus and his plan, then all of a sudden you can see how this church becomes spiritually poor, and eventually there is no life, and it dies. If we find ourselves in such a situation when we are spiritually lazy or negligent, when we don't care about God's word and God's plan, we need to repent. And we need to seek what is God's plan. Lead me. Teach me. We need to go back to the scriptures. But we also need to rejoice. We need to rejoice that we have been given this gift and accepted that we are no longer strangers and aliens to God, that we are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. This is an amazing gift. God just accepted us to be in His body. To be in His body. We belong to His household. We belong to His house. We are His. And this is another amazing gift given to us by Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, when he shed his blood for us, when he rose from the dead and ascended and is now at the right hand of God the Father. He is our representative, he is our Lord, he is our advocate, he is our 
high priest, but he's also the head of this invisible, huge building project, this spiritual body, which is called church. And I hope that you will see church differently, and you will rejoice greatly, and you will value, you will value this gift that God gives you, and you will try to be useful and a good tool, a good building block in this wonderful temple. May God bless all of you. Amen. Now let us conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Dear Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ is our cornerstone, on Him alone we build. With His true saints alone, the courts of